Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to welcome you to GIS 4630, Public Domain Data for GIS. University of Denver, I look forward to working with you in this course. Now folks, geospatial data are the, the foundation upon which GIS and spatial analysis rests. As GIS has matured, the challenge has evolved from generating data to managing the enormous volume of big data, right? Data from government agencies, nonprofit organizations, and industry, and increasingly from ordinary citizens through citizen science and volunteer geographic information efforts. Key to working with this volume of data are essential issues such as privacy, copyright, public domain, cost recovery, metadata standards, and data quality that GIS professionals must grapple with to be effective in the 21st century. This class discusses and applies these issues and works with a rich array of data sources to enable effective decision making in a geographic information system. The prerequisite for this course is GIS 4101, the intro to GIS, or similar GIS course and or work experience. Now folks, this course is a practical course with many ties to the theory of GI science. Most certainly, we will develop our knowledge on how to find data, as you probably would expect in a course like this. Yes, we will do that. We will talk about geospatial data standards and portals. You probably expected that, and yes, we will do that. We will practice downloading or streaming data into our GIS. You probably would have expected that too. But beyond that, I truly want people to understand through this course, issues surrounding data, access, fee versus free, copyright, location privacy, how to assess that data that you download or stream, whether to download or stream it in the first place, and the benefits to each method, the limitations and benefits of the data that you're choosing to use, and how to solve problems using that data. Because of this last part, we will spend the bulk of our hands-on lab time working with data in a GIS environment. Our exercises will involve working on problems of locating a business, working with wind data and other data to site a wind farm, sustainable tourism, sustainable agriculture, invasive species, fire towers, and much more. When you get done with the course, it is my hope that you will do, be able to do three things. Have enhanced skills in working with ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Online. Have a better appreciation for the importance of data in a GIS environment. And all that, all that, uh, that appreciation encompasses. And third, be more thoughtful of and critical of geospatial data. So it is a practical course with a grounding in history, trends, policies, and issues surrounding data. Now, one might think that such a course is not relevant. It's so easy to find data nowadays, right? Data set A, data set B, data set C, grab it, I put it up in my, in my GIS data frame or map environment, and done. But do I really know where it came from? Who created it? How often it was updated? The scale it was created at, and so on. Indeed, the very idea of VGI and citizen science means now anyone is now a potential data producer. You're not just a data consumer any longer. But in my judgment, this course is more relevant than ever before. Now, admittedly, the title of this course sounds a bit it sounds a bit dry, doesn't it? But it's a fascinating subject. Now, my own background, I think, adds some value to such a course and may explain why I am so interested in this topic and why I think it is so relevant. First of all, I spent many years working for data producing agencies, major data producing agencies, NOAA, the US Census Bureau, and the US Geological Survey creating data in conjunction with colleagues, partners, tribal, national, state, and local governments, a wide variety of data users, raster and vector data, including tiger files, the national hydrography data set, digital line graphs, census statistical data, geophysical data, and now at ESRI, I create data on a daily basis, really, to support the educational use of GIS, from weather to natural hazards data, from population to hydro data, energy, consumer behavior, business and economic, health and other data. But there's always more to learn and I look forward to learning from you and the unique perspective and background that you bring to the course. Now if you like this course and find it useful, send a note to the University GIS Coordinator and the Coordinator of the Professional Studies Program that is hosting the course saying, hey, this is a really relevant and valuable course. We need to keep it. Now what will we do in this course? We will be working in the Canvas 
LMS or learning management system. That'll provide our, our framework for our, our discussion and, and other work in the course. Each week we will A, examine readings and videos and discuss them. It is in part so I will know how you're progressing, but even more importantly, so that you can network with your peers. Networking is key to the success in any field as fast changing as GIS, but especially in GIS. It's all about the networking. Second, we will work through a hands-on activity each week, a short one and a longer one. We will discuss our findings in the hands-on activity in the discussion board. Now, sometimes when you go through a GIS activity, you think, well, that's great, but everything is cleaned up, and that's not the, really the way it is in the real world. Well, in this course, you will actually deal with some of those uncertainties and oddities in working with real-world data. I'm not going to clean it up for you, and uh, that may be frustrating at times, but I think it will enable you to gain some key GIS skills that, were so, that will serve you well in the workplace. Each week, we will also take a short quiz. Now, don't stress out about this. Look on the quizzes, rather, as a way for you to assess your progress in the course. Toward the end of the course, you will create a project proposal for something that you will do with public domain data on a topic that you are concerned about. The reason why is because I want you to kind of piece together what you've learned in your own project proposal, but also to get you thinking about, well, what are you interested in? Now, I've chosen a set of labs around data that I think would be interesting and relevant, but this last opportunity here, this project proposal, gives you the chance to say, okay, this is what I'm interested in and how I'm going to apply what I learned in this course to my own research in the future. So, welcome to the course, and let me know along the way what you're thinking about. I look forward to working with you. Thanks. Thanks.